they want to see you. They want to see you. I'm Karen Morgan, and this is my son Matthew Rogers and his dog Retta, R H E T T A. I also want to bring up someone very special. This is my husband, Jeff Morgan. And Matthew's nurse, Ellen. Ellen Wade. <laughs> is 26. Ellen has been with us for 24 years. Wow. So it's amazing. And she's. <laughs> He'll tell the story. <laughs> Ellen is also certified to work with Retta as a, as a team. What's wrong with them? What happened? Can he do anything? Do you keep him at home? And one of my favorites. What can the dog do for Matthew that we here at the school, the adults at the school, can't do for him? Unconditional love, kindness, compassion, friendship, and breaking down the barriers between Matthew and the rest of the world, just to name a few. We got started with Canine Campaigns for Independence. We learned about them when Matthew was four. And when he was six, we got matched with his first dog, Virginia. We called her Jenny. And we went through the application process. Uh, doctors, forms, you know, they checked to make sure that his different abilities matched with the program. And then we flew to the closest facility was in San Diego. So we flew to San Diego to do the interview process. And that went great, finished the application process. When it was time to get matched up, and again, there wasn't a Texas location, the closest is San Diego. <clears throat> so we went for two weeks to San Francisco, uh, Santa Rosa location. We shipped, I don't know, six or seven cases of medical supplies ahead of time. And my other two sons, who are two years older and a year younger, went with my mom and I, and we did the training, because it was very important to me that the family know about the service dog, and that my other children, who were five and eight, Matthew was six, understand about commands and the differences, and when she's on her best, she's working. When she's off leash, you know, she's on this release command, and she's a little more like a normal dog at home. And I didn't want to be, I was a single parent at the time, I didn't want to be mom going through and you know trying to explain this to them it was one of the biggest blessings of our life to get our family back to the quality of life and cci was gracious they had more siblings at that location at the time everybody brought their kids and the gift shop was sold out within a first couple of days so my other children got to know they're not the only ones with a brother or sister with special needs we graduated and came back, and Retta was with uh, Jenny was with us for 10, 11 years. And they said, I said, how do you know when she needs to retire? Oh, you'll know, you'll know. Well, these dogs work, and they do not stop working. And so when it was when she was starting to get trouble with her hips, we approached them, and again, they're available all the time. And we found a neighbor in the neighborhood that took Retta will say, well, why didn't you keep Retta at home? Well, Retta, uh, Jenny, I'm sorry, I'm going to do a name the dogs. She's, she was about 11. Retta is 12. And we just have completed the application process for his third dog. So sometime in the next 12 months, Retta will retire. And the process is, if we keep Retta at home and then get a new dog, it's like saying, okay, Retta's well, that makes her in her mid-80s. So we're going to say, okay, Retta, we're going to keep you at home, but you can't be in Matthew's room, and she's still going to work. She still doesn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. And so you can be a part of the family, but you can't do your job anymore. Well, that's right. kind of a disconnect. Yeah. She wants to retire like you guys want to retire long before 85, right? <laughs> <laughs> and do this. So we have um, either her puppy raiser, who is in California, or a good friend of mine in Dallas will take 
Greta when she retires and we get back with Matthew's third dog. So it's a great transition process. So if you're wondering, okay, Matthew is not verbal. When he is a little more alert, he, he's very, very auditory. And so when he's in a new room and new things going on, he's going to listen very intently for figure out what's going on. I talk to him like I do my other two children, and he understands a lot. But if you're saying, well, what can the dog do? Let me see if I, I'm going to have you hold this for me a little bit. <laughs> She's a constant sore. I mean, if he, you can imagine being in a um, being in a wheelchair and one that requires a lot of support, you know, and being kind of strapped in. Not the most comfortable. And Retta can help him relax like nobody else. Now, he happens to be getting a brand new wheelchair today at 4 o'clock, so after six years of this wheelchair, he'll be a lot more comfortable here in a few hours. And she can get things. If you say toy, Greta will go around the house with her basket of toys and bring you a toy. When she eats, everything wonderful happens around Matthew. Matthew is the boss. Matthew has the master suite of rooms in our home. And Jeff and I had the room over the garage. <laughs> Literally tells you, we have a ceiling track lift system that helps to carry him around. So, you know, we just kind of rent the room over the garage. He's very gracious to let us do that. And he has his own van and his own dog, and he basically runs our, our little world. When it's time to eat, all the good things are happening around Matthew. So we'll bring the food to Matthew's room. And he will either use like a communication device, which I left over there, or Matthew will use some of his verbal tones to tell Retta to eat. This one um, just stopped working, but basically we would put Matthew's hand on the middle bar, and one side says, okay, and that's Retta's command to eat, and the other side says, no. Well, it didn't take long for Matthew to figure out no means he's hazing the dog and she has to sit and wait and wait and wait and he just loves, he's a fabulous sense of humor, he just loves to, to tease her, make her wait. And when he either makes a sound or hits a button, she eats, then she gets her little metal bowl, brings it from the master bedroom or wherever he is, and brings it back to the closet to hand it to us to say, I'm done, here it is, you can refill it for the next meal, automatically. And if you're not there, she will kind of drop it on the floor and get your attention and pick it back up and say, here I am, I've got all this under control. Matthew has, um, his room kind of looks like an ICU, a little less sterile than the ICUs at the hospital, but a lot of different medical equipment. Down. And read it gets up on his hospital bed. If you say snuggle, she will get up and snuggle right up to him. And, you know, it just makes you melt. Who doesn't want a dog that can help and relax? So not only out in public, everybody knows Matthew and Retta. They really have no idea who I am. <laughs> I'm just the mom. Oh, you're the mom. We know Matthew and Retta. And it goes through to whether he plays buddy league baseball or, you know, Oh, everybody knows, sorry about that, Bob. Everybody knows him. We used to know who you were, and that's the way it should be. And when he's in baseball, he plays Saturday, Matthew's in the dugout, his nurse is in the dugout, and Red is in the dugout. Jeff and I can't be in the dugout. So Jeff and I and my little rescue dog, Teddy, are in the stands. But again, Red is right there, and all the kids around want to be a part of Matthew and the dog, and there's a variety of kids with a variety of things going on. Some people think, you know, what does this maybe really do for a quality of life? And, you know, for kids that, I mean, some kids can, or ambulatory walk and have animals, but they need that extra person there. 
I cannot say enough about how fabulous this organization is. They make it so easy. And when I found out that when we got Greta, for example, she was a home placement because by this point he has eight <coughs> respiratory machines, a feeding machine, and there's no possible way <laughs> via maybe Mark Cuban to fly to California and um, stay there for the two weeks of training and you stay on campus in the facilities. It's wonderful, very, very wonderful. So they did a direct placement. And when I found out they were building a facility in Texas, I was thrilled. I thought, well, we can probably rent an oversized van and cart this stuff wherever. Well, not only is it Texas, but it's like LBJ and 35. I mean, it's just right here. So when he gets his third dog, we will go and stay on campus for two weeks and do the training. Now, the dogs are fully trained, but it's a matter of, I've got 20 years of habits with animals, with canine, canine companion dogs, that may or may not be quite by the rule book. So I have to be trained. Even the third dog, I have to be retrained. Make sure I'm doing it appropriately. And I believe you'll be there. I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff and I um, met three and a half years ago on a blind date, been married about three years, so he's pretty new to this, but he is the only dad Matthew's ever known, so he's an outstanding guy. Yes? You know, some of the questions that I had, when I first met Matthew and the dog, I thought, you know, what does the dog really do? Some, maybe the same thing that you're wondering. But when you, are, when you are out in public, it's been amazing to watch people come up. And the first thing they'll do is, can we pet the dog? The dog wears, has a vest on that says, ask Matthew first. Oh. So it's not that he's, he's not an invisible person. When I was growing up, I had an uncle with Down syndrome. So I understood a little bit what it was like to have a relative or somebody close to me with special needs. Matthew took things to another extreme for me and as far as the, the severity of his, his disabilities. It's been wonderful to me to watch how, um, as, as Karen said, not just the, the, that Retta will be with him at home, but in public, how uh, Retta breaks down barriers. And people who might be uh, afraid to say, you know, like Karen said at the beginning, what's, what's wrong, what's this, what's that, um, all of a sudden Matthew was as a very living, real person, breaks down barriers, and, um, and as she said, they know Matthew, and they know Retta, and we're just a tag along. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I guess we'll do questions at the end if anybody has any.